Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. We especially welcome those of you who may be joining us from home this morning. Our celebrant is Father Don. We remember the special way of this Mass, Victor Panazalis. The entrance antiphon. Come, you blessed of my Father, says the Lord. I was sick and you visited me. Amen, I say to you. Whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Welcome to those who are watching from home. Coming together as we prepare for the celebration of you this morning, let us ask the Father's forgiveness for his little gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came together with the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift Saint Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, Grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. <coughs> remember then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white, because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the angel of the church of La in Laodicea, write this, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So because you are warm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything. And yet do not realize that you are wretched pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed and buy ointment to smear on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, 
and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. Who tends not to his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. Alleluia, alleluia. God loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. And now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a, child, a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He's gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I've extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a, a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank goodness there's not a hope in, this, in the Gospel today, because this first reading is very hopeful, sir heavy laden with uh, the book of Revelation's critique on the various churches and uh, as he goes through all these critiques um, it's hard. you kind of get a chance to pick up who you are and I thought of it, the one here where um, the last one uh, where you're lukewarm because you're rich and affluent and have no need of anything sounds a little bit like us doesn't it sounds like us in these days in our in our lives um, and says, it says, you not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. So that's what he says to the wealthy people, to the people who have, uh, have good means. Interesting in this reading, I think, though, is that, that uh, point at which Jesus says, I'm knocking at the door. Because that's become famous in pictures. It's a famous theme in, in uh, retreat directors' conversations. And they'll often note that that picture that we remember most of Jesus knocking at the door, uh, there is no handle on the door. The only handle on the door is on the inside. And uh, it's sort of a reminder to us, and worth thinking about this morning, uh, that uh, Jesus who knocks at our door, who wants to be part of our lives, who wants to enter further in, can only be uh, admitted 
if we are willing to open the door and do it for them. And so it lies upon us, uh, as I think with all the churches, it lies upon us to make those differences in our relationship with the Lord. In the gospel, uh, just again, so often you note that the encounter with Jesus transforms this person. Uh, and the encounter with Jesus should transform all of us. And even though we are kind of regular in our relationship with Jesus, and so it's not like we're meeting him for the first time, like the Zacchaeus did, uh, nonetheless, each time we meet him, there should be some chance for us to, to grow, to become holy, to be transformed by his presence and his love for us. Trust in our merciful God, we lift up our prayers and petitions to Him. For the Church, may God continue to bless and purify her in her work of proclaiming the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. For public officials and leaders of nations, may God grant them fortitude in their work of eradicating racism in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who live with chronic illness, may God's infinite love strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may God's grace at work in our lives bear good fruit for the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died today, may God's merciful embrace welcome them home. Let us pray to the Lord. For those persons whose names are written in a book of petitions and for all of the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord. <coughs> We need your mercy and grace for our lives each day. We ask that you hear and answer the prayers we bring before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. Amen. Receive, O oh Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity <coughs> may, by the example of, of Blessed Elizabeth, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation of you, right? Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, by sending down your Spirit upon them like do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once we're giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim in the death of the Lord, special resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis, Bishop Gerald, and all leaders of the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, <coughs> And all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. The communion had to come. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Elizabeth, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks to all of you at home for joining us this morning.